likes it. Now, what's the best present he's ever given you? His voice. Um, his love. <laughs> That's it. Has he always been close to both of you? Um, his dad worked a lot, so he was closer to me in the early days. And then later on in his teens, he started, he and his dad started doing things together. And uh, he was in Columbia Boys Choir. I think he started at 12. And uh, so we followed him around to all the concerts. And that was actually a boys and girls choir. They just call it Columbia Boys Choir. And they ended up, when he was 14, going to Europe for three weeks. They were in the Eisteddfod in Wales, which is the most prestigious choral um, competition in the world. And they placed fourth as choir in the world. Oh, my goodness. Yeah. yeah. So did you go with him to Europe? No, no. We had to pay a chaperone, and we paid... $2,400 and $1,200 it was for Blake for three weeks, England and Wales, and the other $1,200 was for the chaperone. And we didn't get picked to be chaperones. They picked doctors and nurses, and uh, so that ended up good because a lot of them got sick over there. Well, good meaning we didn't get sick. Yeah, <laughs> no, I mean, they could take care of the kids. Like ever athletic? Mm, yeah, he played soccer and baseball, and but he wasn't really that into it. He was always built a tree house, actually two of them, uh, always running, always very good. In fact, we put him in a, a little gym when he was young, when they first came out, and that's for kids who are not very coordinated to help them with their abilities. And they kicked him out after two months and said, your kid doesn't need a little gym. Oh. I mean, he's coordinated. Oh. You know? He really doesn't need help, but it was a good channel for his energy. I can imagine. Um, you all seem very pl proud of Blake. Um, could you tell us what your proudest moment of him was on either outside American Idol or on American Idol? Uh, on American Idol when he didn't talk back to Simon. And he intuitively knew when to keep his mouth shut. And I was very proud of him. Every time uh, Simon criticized or any of them, that he just bit his lip and it was like, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. You know, instead of saying, well, but you're wrong, but, 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 no. He just, you know, he knew what he thought of his performance and if Simon didn't agree, and I think he figured out that a lot of people liked Simon and it probably wasn't a good idea to, uh, you know, really tell Simon what you thought of him because some people were off the next day when they did that. So I think he learned from others' mistakes. And Dallas? Well, I'm sorry, but I had a proud moment every week when he picked his songs. Aww. And uh, he performed them really well. Um, I like to hear him sing. Um, I like the beatbox blended with it, but I like his voice. And I was truly amazed every week. Now, what was your proudest moment other than American Idol? Um, for me, when he got hired from Kickshaw and they did their first performance in the mall, small shopping center down by our house. Um, Kickshaw was actually a very good a cappella band. And he was the youngest. He was 18. And they were, the rest of them were 24, 5 years old. And, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, they saw his talent and, and uh, his first show was good. Aww. I'm very proud of him. I figured he'd made it as a musician. Then. So did you ever worry that he might not make it as a musician? No. No. Making making idol was the frosting on the cake. Do so you think he I just would have... In our opinion, I mean, he had a big fan base here of people who would go out to the clubs to hear him, you know. So, I mean, it was by word of mouth, you know, the underground culture here. And uh, they knew he was great. So, and he has the same respect for other musicians here in this area. And it, it seems like a lot of... I'm pretty sure most of the people in AD, who are in the who helped him on the album the, or the ADD band. I still don't know if they're calling themselves ADD as a band, but um, it seems like most of them were people that Blake knew before um, before American Idol. Is that right? Yeah, like, he did. He knew all the band members. Um, Johnny Nails. Mm -hmm. I can't even remember his real name. Ryan, I think. Um, he had met him once. And 
he'd went he'd been in L.A. for two, three years and then came back. And um, Blake had never worked with him on stage, but he'd worked with the rest. So uh, off and on, and with Kevin a lot. Um, one of the things that is interesting is that he's the first person that's been able to pick his band members from people and not assigned by the record company. Yeah, I was wondering, yeah, that was something that we wondered about, actually. Did they have to try out, or did Blake just say, these are the people that are going to be said, in my band? This is my band, and, and uh, I guess they heard him and accepted him, because they are a band now. He had worked with them all individually when he was doing club work, you know, the clubs around here. And he played with Kevin as a backup drummer, just him and his loop pedals and Kevin off and on for years. So he's known Kevin the longest. And the other ones, he'd jam with them at different clubs when they were playing with other groups, you know. That's it. Now, how many copies of ADD do you have? I have one in my car and one at work and one in my office here, but there's a, a whole bunch downstairs in a box. <laughs> <laughs> if we need more, we can go get them. And do you have a favorite song on the album? Oh, that's a tough one. Uh, we're so bad on titles. Uh, oh, hang on, i got to get one to look <laughs> I like Surrender. Surrender is one of the only songs that he did not write. Um, uh, but I also uh, like What You Got to Lose. Um, I like How Many Words. I, I like um, Here's My Hello. And the one that's not on the album, I'm Just Human. But it is on iTunes. is one of my favorites. I like them all. But it's a tough, tough choice. I like The End of the World on the album. And uh, Hate to Love Her, uh -huh. Here's My Hello, How Many Words, you know, the She's Making Me Lose It. I mean, I really, I like that as far as uh, danceability, A Thousand Miles. And uh, he does one called Emotional Waterfall that I absolutely love. He writes really pretty love songs. It's on YouTube now. Oh, it's on YouTube. That is. I love that. And, of course, Transmission and all the other old tunes. Um, like I said, I like him better alone with his loop pedals, um, not depending on anybody. That's why I used to love to sing a cappella without my guitar, uh, because I didn't depend on anybody but my voice. The other CD I have is I downloaded every one of the uh, performances on Idol from the download page. Yes. So there's a full song, and that's probably my favorite album, because I loved his Mac the Knife. And, uh, of course, time of the season. Yes, definitely. Now, I have all of his performances from Idol as well, so time of the season. And then I actually think that the download of When the Stars Go Blue is just gorgeous. Oh, me yeah. too. Me too. Absolutely. Because uh, I know that a lot of people were like, I don't know if I'm going to download, you know, that one. I'm not very, you know, big on country music. And I'm like, just download it. Just download yeah, it. Yeah, I mean, it's, to me, there's two types of country. There's the I shot my dog and my wife country. And there's pretty country. You and we, know? Like, we both like love songs. Yeah. He does write very good love songs. So. Oh, the one, the, the song love song that he did on the show? Yes. That one, um, we like to listen to it, too. A lot. I saw your picture in the paper today.